The Minister of Information and Culture, Alhaji Lai Mohammed, uh, has said that the federal government will take possession of Nigeria's looted artifacts whenever they are returned. He cleared the air on these in Lagos at a news conference on the efforts by the federal government to repatriate looted and smuggled artifacts from around the world. Mohammed was reacting to the controversy that had trilled uh, who would take the possession of the expected artifact between the Oba of Benin, Oba Ewari II, and Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseke. The minister, however, said the federal government uh, was the entity recognized by international laws as the authority in control of antiquities originating from the country. I have joined in us in the studio Edo State Former Commissioner for Art, Culture and Tourism, Osaze Osemwenge Eru. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Good evening, uh, good, everyone. Good evening. Good to have you. Um, th th there have been a lot of back and forth about this uh, matter. And um, uh, it's beginning to look like it's been uh, put to rest finally. Uh, but then, uh, in, in your time as Commissioner for Arts, Culture and Tourism, uh, you were at the forefront of the fight uh, to repatriate all uh, Benin stolen <laughs> artifacts wherever uh, they were across the globe. So how did it go in particular? How did you go about it? How did it go in your own time? <laughs> can, you describe, uh, can you describe how the struggle went? Oh, well, um, I think there's been... Um you know, a group of people and individuals, um, you know, fighting for the repatriation of those artifacts. And um, I would say as a Benison or a Bini person and mm -hmm. as the Commissioner for Culture, then I was very passionate about it. We raised, to, first of all, to raise our create awareness about these artifacts and let the people know that these artifacts exist in various uh, different museums across the globe. Mm -hmm. And in 2018, during the inaugural, um, not, uh, do festival for arts and culture that we did in the state. We had the opportunity to as, have a photo exhibition of over 1,000 of those artifacts in their correct location across the globe. We have them in uh, the various museums in Europe and America, and we're able to show the photo exhibition of those artifacts at their current location during the Igwe Festival of His Royal Majesty Yamanobane Edo Ukwala Bolo in 2018. And we had a photo exhibition where the government inaugurated the commission, the uh, exhibition. And that created a lot of awareness for the visitors that came to the palace at that time to know that these, these artifacts are in these museums in Berlin, in Minnesota, in New York, in London, um, Germany, Switzerland, and France, So, which was very good. And the feedback that we ha had then as a ministry was that People that go to those museums, we're not asking questions, say, no, this thing belongs to the uh, to Benin, and it should be returned back. So there was a lot of pressure on them. And there were a series of meetings, you know, emails, committees, and meetings, and all that talking about the return of those artifacts. I'm glad now that, you know, Germans have taken the lead to return the artifacts back to Nigeria, and of course to Benin and the state where it belongs, because <laughs> That is what they do want, the do people want. That's what the Yoba of Benin wants. That's what we want as a state to say that we need this artifact back in our state. Hmm, I see. Okay, now um, the Minister of uh, Information and Culture has said the federal government is going to have to uh, take custody of the artifact whenever they are returned. What you take on this? Well, I don't know why it made that decision because I've not been in the country. I came in yesterday. So I don't know what led to him making that decision. I was not part of that meeting. I was not in the committee and all that. So I cannot really speak to that. But I think in my own personal opinion that, you know, those things belong to Benin and they should be returned back to Benin. But okay. I, like I said, I don't know why he made that decision or what is going on. Okay, you've not been around. Um, there the, are the reports that in November 2020, you were arrested in, uh, some say in Amsterdam, in Italy, in France. Where exactly were you arrested? What were you arrested for? Oh, I was actually arrested on the 2nd of December 2019, not November, Okay. and not in France. Uh -huh. And I was arrested in uh, Amsterdam uh -huh. on my way for an official duty to, to discuss the artifacts in okay. Berlin. Mm -hmm. You know, we're actually on our way to Germany, the Berlin, the capital of Germany, on invitation of His uh, uh, Excellency, the Nigerian ambassador to Germany, Mohamed Tuga, mm -hmm. when I was arrested in uh, Amsterdam. And, and um, you know, the, so <laughs> I was surprised at the arrest, confused at the beginning, 
only to be informed that I was wanted in Italy for mafia-related offenses. You know, like I said, it was a, it was a surprise thing to me and to my family and my friends, you know, for that. But we did went through that, tried to fight the extradition, tried to know what actually was the crime or alleged crimes in Italy. But we didn't get any evidence until after two months, the extradition process failed and I was extradited to Italy, to Rome, on the 21st of uh, February. 2020. Okay, now because um, uh, uh, it's a good thing that you're here to clear the air on these uh, misgivings, on these uh, uh, controversies. Yeah. Some say November 2020, some say uh, mm -hmm. it was in Italy, some say it was in Amsterdam, others say it was in France. Okay, uh, what, were the reason, uh, what were the reasons for your uh, arrest and uh, detention? Also, in the same breath, I also wanted to address this. Clear the air once and for all. Uh, a lot of people say uh, you were accompanying Governor Basaki on a trip when you were arrested. Was it official? Was it was it an official trip? As like I said, we're going for a meeting in in, uh, in Berlin on invitation. But was it official? Of course, we're okay. going for a meeting for the artifact, and the commissioner for local government and chitanzi affairs was with me. Okay. With four other people, we does not have to do with the governor. The governor was not in that meeting. I mean, that trip. Mm. I was not traveling with the governor. We were going to have a meeting with the uh, Nigerian ambassador to, to Germany, Mohamed Tuga, you know, three o'clock on that 2nd of um, December. So it has nothing to do with France. It has nothing to do with the governor. It has nothing to do with money holding or uh, all the nonsense that was in speculated on social media and even on established media houses. Okay, was, was it, did they find evidences uh, to their allegations against you? No, of course not. I was just a victim of racial discrimination and manipulation of the Italian justice system by a very corrupt prosecutor, Dr. Stefano Castellani. He is a very corrupt prosecutor, and we were trying to, you know, they were trying to manipulate the justice system from the beginning to the end. And this thing, he has used that process to convert over 300 Nigerians in, in prison in Italy. So we, I was surprised that um, I was being, uh, uh, I was arrested, so we tried to fight the case in court. On the 9th of uh, March, 2020, we had the opportunity to be in court, and uh, my lawyers applied, for, you know, went for a freedom court, which yeah. I got my free, uh, the, I was released, only for the prosecutor to issue another arrest warrant, without even leaving the premi uh, prison premises. So we went through the trial in Rome, and on the 10th of July, 2020, we went to the pre-trial. So I was still hoping that at the pre-trial, I will be released. Because you cannot arrest somebody without evidence. Mm -hmm. and it's strange. You know? So on the 10th of July, I asked the judge, what was the evidence against me that you are accusing me of a mafia kingpin? And the allegations are gross because the, I was accused of the 416Bs, which is the highest Italian mafia criminal code that has to do with importation and exportation of firearms, importation and exportation of drugs, cocaine, prostitution, human trafficking, extortion, killing, kidnapping, Etc. So you cannot ha accuse somebody of this kind of event without any single evidence or proof of your allegations. So I went through the trial, and of course I opted for the um, opted for the long trial, which we compelled the prosecutor to produce evidence against me. So the case was now adjourned to September, from September to October, from October to November. Eventually, had a day in court on the 24th of November, 2020. Was that when you were finally released? No, 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 no. So that when is you just, that what? is just the beginning of the process. I was okay. released on the 29th of May, May, okay. 2021. Okay, okay, then. Uh, so, uh, le well, um, so it was this year you were finally released because they couldn't find any evidence. No, there was no single evidence. We were just them. about your uh, official duty. Of course. According to you. Okay, um, if you're still, uh, because we're really pressed for time, so okay. I'm trying to see how we can wrap this up quickly. If, you, if you're still the commissioner for culture, uh, arts and tourism in, in your state, what advice would you be giving uh, Governor Gabriel Obaseki now? If I was still the commissioner. But unfortunately, yeah. I'm not the commissioner. I know. If you were still uh, in the position to give the government, the st your state government advice. What kind of what advice are you talking about? Be giving him now, yeah. What kind of advice are you talking about? Uh, how do, uh, things that could move the state forward economically and, and security wise. No, the governor is very wise. He knows what he's doing. And I'm sure once he constitutes his cabinet, you have uh, commissioners to work and, with him. And what about the artifact? How would you advise him 
to handle the artifacts? Would you, would you advise them to go with the flow of the federal government and, and allow the federal government uh, hold the artifacts and keep them? Or would you say you should uh, stand its ground and say, no, it's for the state, it belongs to the state. We are taking back what belongs to us. <laughs> the governor is very wise enough and he knows what he needs to do. I don't think the governor will be stand and let the artifacts be taken to the, will be collected and taken by the federal government. But this is the government thing. We work with the federal, the state, and if you hear the governor several times, you're talking about the tripod uh, system, whereby even the collaboration of the palace, the government, and the federal government. Because no individual can actually portray, you know, fight for the return of this artifact without the federal government. Mm -hmm. That's why you have them involved. And you need the state government as well to be involved. And of course, you need the palace, the Royal Majesty, the above building, mm -hmm. who is the custodian of our culture, mm -hmm. to be fully involved in this as well. So mm -hmm. I think that is what they are doing. So I'm sure the governor knows what he's doing, and he's very wise, and he's not. And I'm sure the most important is that these artifacts are coming back home. Yeah. Not just only Germany, we have France, we have Britain, we have other countries that have those artifacts abroad. So the most important is to, for us to work closely so that we have this certified bar for the other people. Mr. Azazel Semwinge, uh, thank you very much thank for, for um, joining us on the show tonight. Um, he is a, a former commissioner for culture, arts and tourism in Edo State. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.